Hey guys, so a couple weeks ago I decided to make myself a disc sander for the lathe. It's always been a pretty big annoyance not being able to cut straight lines or have smooth surfaces at my home shop, if you can even call it that. So I decided to make myself a disc sander. Um, I came to the realization that my lathe is pretty much just a really expensive motor that turns things in a circle. If I attached sandpaper, it would pretty much be a disc sander. So, I went about making that. I started by marking the center of a pretty somewhat square piece of poplar that I had, and then cut the corners off. This is the bandsaw that my dad bought almost a decade ago to cut, make basically one cut a year for my Cub Scout Pinewood Derby competition, um, which worked out well because I, I, mean, I did pretty well in that, but um, I didn't uh, basically just collected dust until I realized that I like woodworking about a couple of years ago. Um, I mean, it works pretty well. It was, a, I think it was less than a hundred dollars. My dad still gloats about that. Um, and it definitely beats cutting with a handsaw. The only reason why I am a little bit salty with it is that it's the actual band is pretty flimsy and it doesn't really cut straight. So even on a softwood like poplar that we have here, it, I can achieve a pretty wavy line. Um, so this is the primary reason why I want to make a, a disc sander. Um, so here, um, I basically screwed on the faceplate and used the scraper to get it planed and circular. Um, sanding is my favorite part of woodworking. So even though it really didn't have to look pretty, I sanded it to a nice 200 grit. Um, I then cut a groove using the parting chisel into the side of the disc. Now it was just a matter of using um, we're cutting out some 60 grit sandpaper um, into a circle. Uh, then using a combination of Gorilla Glue and Wood Glue. I wasn't sure if Wood Glue would hold up with paper, I would assume it would. But I knew Gorilla Glue is like the strongest stuff known to mankind. So I used that on the edges, which was probably the most important part so that the sandpaper didn't come up uh, and wear out. Um, and then I used Wood Glue everywhere else, which worked out great. This is actually the second disc that I'm, I've made. The first one was a pretty straightforward 120 grit disc, um, but I wanted something a little bit rougher. Um, since 120 wears out actually very easily, um, it, I was using it on a project and it just kind of, the sand just kind of dulled out, which wasn't good. Um, so I, wanted, I also wanted to make a system that made it easier for me to switch grits um, and use multiple multiple discs. Um, I didn't like that I had to keep unscrewing and rescrewing on the faceplate um, when I wanted to change grits because this not only weakens the wood, um, but it's also just an inefficient way to do things. You can actually see the 120 grit next to me, and as you can probably tell, it's pretty badly burned and dulled. Um, it just kind of just kind of wears out over time. Um, I don't have a air hose or anything like that, so uh, there's no way for me to clean it. That's why I'm going for the 60 grit. Um, I think that'll hold up a lot better. Um, I have very limited tools, uh, especially wood. Actually, no, especially tools, both of which I'm pretty, um, pretty sparse on. Uh, but in the past, I made an attachment for my lathe that I never really got around to use. Um, so. The nice part was that I didn't, this attachment didn't need bolts, or, or didn't need screws. I used bolts to mount onto the faceplate. Um, this would solve the issue of unscrewing the faceplate every time I want to switch grits. Um, so as you can see, I'm using screws that I had lying around to put on the four individual blocks. Um, the top of the screws, if you envision the screw, would kind of fit into the groove that I cut on the disc. Um, basically, I would take out Take out three, or take out one of the, one of the screws. Kind of slide the disc in um, using the top of the screws as you know, kind of guidelines for the groove, um, and then stick the fourth screw in as a peg. Um, then I would tighten all the screws to lock it in place and really make sure that that thing does not come flying off. Um, this was actually a really, really good way of using, you know, this attachment that I, I really wasn't planning on using. Um, also just kind of, it was fun. It was fun to think about. 
And there you have it, a perfectly functioning disc center. Thanks for watching.